Are you new to Star Wars Squadrons and wondering how players are so hard to hit? Does it seem like their movement is impossible to track? It's called pinballing. A pilot is moving his ship like a pinball, changing directions like it's bouncing off the ball. In this video, I'm going to explain how to be the best pilot in the galaxy. How to fly like Anakin, Han, Luke, or Poe in Star Wars Squadrons. Boom, boom. The game becomes what it truly is when it gets into the hands of the players. Squadrons Online is something that the game devs never predicted, and the story mode just won't prepare you for. Sorry farm boy, I'll go over the mechanics of boost drifting, how to use it with power management, and the best way to learn. This video will have you taking out a Star Destroyer on your own in no time. Always be boost drifting. Break up the boring spin fights of past flight games, Motive added in the boost drift mechanic. What was designed as a limited tank of boost that you had to use strategically, players figured out how to use it as an infinite tank. Meta became players moving across the map entirely by boost drifting. When you divert power to engines, you build up boost in your boost bar. Every time you hit the boost button, it draws from your boost tank. So you see it here in the boost bar. So to maximize the amount of boost you have, you wanna hit the boost button as little as possible and engage a drift as quickly after hitting boost as possible. The zero throttle. Each boost drift is going to be chained together. Due to a bug, so long as your throttle is set lower than your speed, you'll instantly be at maximum speed as you chain together these drifts. Many players started putting their throttle at zero, what is known as zero throttling. Make sure they're always under that speed. It is counterintuitive in a flight game to put your throttle to zero to be at maximum speed, but Welcome to Squadrons. Power Management. There's three systems to charge. Engines, which like we discussed, builds your boost. Lasers, when overcharged, your weapons are more powerful. And shields, which also have an overcharge that gives more protection. Advanced power lets you maximize power completely in any system. Basic limits, so you still have a few pips remaining in the others. Each time you boost drift, there is near one second period of time that boost will not charge or decay. So you move power to lasers or shields to charge those as needed in that time frame. So each boost drift is a combination of quickly hitting boost drift while moving power from engines to lasers, then shields, and then back into lasers, and then engines, and repeating the process with another boost drift that starts the sequence again. It's very important to move power through the systems as I just explained for two reasons. One, dead drifting. A dead drift is when all the power is out of engines and you can tell the difference by the length of the drift. It will be longer than if power was in engines and you'll have more time to charge another system and maintain your speed. Basic power will never allow for a full dead drift as it leaves pips back, but still nearly as effective with only one downside I'll address next. Two, shield skipping. As I said, and we'll repeat, you go from engines to lasers, then shields, and then back to lasers, then engines, through all the systems. The reason I say to do it this way is not only the dead drift, but this creates shield skipping. It will bypass a cooldown time on shield regeneration. As your opponent's hitting you with shots and you're moving your power through the systems this way, you'll skip the cooldown that normally comes with shield regeneration. Opponents shooting at you will have diminishing returns. Sorry, basic players, because of that one pip remaining in engines, you won't be able to get the shield skipping effect. This entire style of power management that I've talked about, zero throttle, uh, chaining, boost drifts with dead drifts, and shield skipping is called boost gasping because you can do it on such a little amount of boost in your tank. It's like you're 
gasping for boost each time while charging another system. You can do this and stay alive with very little health. One haul and a dream, all you need. Who's skipping? This is the absolute fastest way to traverse the map and to charge systems. Boost skipping. This is when you have a full or nearly full bar of boost and you will boost drift, but rather than holding the drift, you'll just quickly start boost drifting again. So you'll go boost drift, boost drift, boost drift, boost drift as quickly as you can to maximize each bar of boost and get as many skips as you can out of it. While you're doing these skips, you can be charging another system such as lasers or shields as needed. This is usually the best way to start off a game to get, a, get your systems charged. There's the deep dark secrets of pinballing. Now, the best way to learn and practice them is to create a custom with just yourself in it. Make it a fleet battles. Now, just keep doing circles, practicing, keeping your power in, repeating, moving power through the systems, doing dead drifts, moving them back. And just repeat the process until you can keep your power up and boost the whole time. Once you can do that, try orbiting around a light cruiser, doing some damage, and get used to keeping your lasers and shields up under pressure. When you feel like you've really got the hang of it, you can take it online and try it against some other players, get better at it, and who knows, be able to out of phase an ISD all by yourself. Boom, boom.